Welcome to episode three of the Microflash Toilet Maker training of creating the soak pits and building the user interface slab. We are making progress on the Microflash Toilet and the first step is adding the rocks to the soak hole and those rocks need to be fairly large for the first section and we are looking at rocks about three inches in diameter which is seven or eight centimeters in diameter and then they will go almost to where the so-called ditch is located and then uh, we, we will add one inch or 2.5 centimeter diameter rocks on top of that and we're cutting the digester pipe and about a three inch pipe is good uh, to make sure that it doesn't clog. A lot of times a two inch pipe will suffice for a household toilet and it will go from the wall of the digester halfway into the digester hole and it should be sloping so that we have a good slope from the digester wall into the digester uh, soak pit and that is our goal on building this toilet is getting uh, the rocks in and getting the pipe installed and once the pipe is installed the the blocks will be on either side of that pipe the liquid filtrate from 15 uses per day is six to eight liters of urine and water. The basic system, the filtrate is allowed to penetrate a small rock filled soak hole, which will leach into the soil. The layer of small rocks should be about two inches to five centimeters high. Cover the small rocks inside the soak hole with a piece of recycled plastic. It is important to remember not to overfill the soak hole. And if you fill up the ditch between the digester and the soak hole before you have all the rocks in place, it can be really hard. So it's better to get the depth so you're just slightly below the ditch and then you put in the small rocks. Once the small rocks are in, you put in the that's recycled and that goes into the soak hole now where the edges are up higher and that covers the rock so that the soil doesn't fill up the spaces between that the, the rock below it and then once the plastic is in place it's good to put a few rocks to hold the plastic uh, down tight once the rocks are in place topsoil now can cover the remaining space between the plastic and the surface of the soil from the homeowner's perspective, they will just see soil and not really see the soak hole. Now we are talking about mixing the cement for the slabs. If we want to make three slabs for one micro flush toilet unit, which is one user interface, one access panel, and the bucket slab, then we need to mix up 1.5 head pans of cement eight headpans of sand, and five headpans of stones. And that will produce enough for one whole unit if we're building one household microflush toilet unit. If we are mass producing slabs, our goal is to create a user interface slab, an access panel slab, and bucket slabs. And they'll create five slabs if we are doing six headpans of cement, 24 head pans of sand or five wheelbarrow loads and then 15 head pans of stones or three wheelbarrow loads of stones and we've learned that one bag of cement measures three loads of head pans if you're mixing it in small units the ratio is one three four which they use in Kenya. It's one head pans of cement to three head pans of sand and four head pans of stones. And then the water is mixed as you go. And you can see from the video 
that the sand and the gravel and the cement are mixed and you slowly add in the water until you get the right uh, thickness of the cement that can be poured into the slabs. We've got people mixing in the sand and the stone, other people bringing in the water. Now it's a matter of mixing the rock and the sand and the gravel uh, with the cement to mix the cement that will be used for making the top front slab. And what we have learned is if we are in a community building a lot of digesters and microflush toilets, it's easier to build a bunch of toilets at the same time. And so we're using both sides of the frame to pour these front slabs. And we uh, tie the rebar into position so that each top front slab, which I also call the user interface slab, user interface hole is uh, 12 inches by 17 inches and it's four inches from the top of the uh, frame to the user interface hole. And what we have done is it's centered uh, one foot on each side of that digester. The user interface frame is three feet by four feet or 91.4 centimeters by 122 centimeters. The access panel slab is two feet by three feet or 61 centimeters by 91.4 centimeters. The user interface opening is 12 inches by 17 inches or 30 centimeters by 43 centimeters. There should be a foot on each side of the user inter interface opening or 30 centimeters on each side and we'll see that as a do the work. We tie the iron rods together or rebar every six by six inches or 15 by 15 centimeters apart. Rebar is cut to fit the frame and tied together and then once we have the frames for the molds that we're making we begin to put the user interface boxes that the man is carrying in now to fill that hole and there's a handle on those frames to make it easier to pull that out later. It is important to pour the cement onto used cement bags or recycled plastic. It avoids pouring the cement straight onto the dirt. The right order is to lay down the used cement bags under the frame first, then add the tied iron rods, and finally the user interface box molds go on last. Once you have the cement bags laid down, the iron rods, and the user interface, it's time to pour the cement into the molds. And if you'll notice, the cement fills up the entire mold of four feet by three feet, or 91 centimeters by 122 centimeters. And the only place where the cement does not go is in that user interface mold. That will be empty because that's where the human waste falls down into the digester. Either the seat or the squat fixture will go over that hole where that frame has the opening. And you'll notice that some of them have the handle and really all of them should be having the handle so when you're working that out of the mold it's easier to pull it the user interface slab and the access panel slab will cover the entire space of the digester that is built underground when the water table is lower than one meter or three feet. The access panel frames are two feet by three feet or 61 centimeters by 91.4 centimeters. And here we are making mini frames so we can pour mini user interface slabs at the same time. We've also on the far end have the access slabs for the uh, user interface for the toilets. Here they are affixing the iron rods, uh, which are about six inches apart, and the mason is fixing handles. Here you can see the handles after the concrete is poured. You need enough access so that the person lifting the access panel has enough room to hold your hand in there, and this is how the access panel looks 
with the uh, pipe affixed to it at the end. So we are thanking you for watching episode three and get ready for episode four that is coming up next. Thanks so much.